Hello, my name is Sans Ritchie. I'm the Territory Sales Manager for Amprobe. I've been working in the field of test and measurement for 26 years. Here we have an amazing new tool, the Amprobe INSP3, or the Wire Inspector. What this does is this is a rugged tester. It's designed to verify the building wire compliance to the electrical code, especially the voltage drop under load, and it, it'll identify issues such as splices, connections, uh, the quality of the conductor. It'll even tell if you have an undersized wire. To operate this instrument, you simply plug it in with the cord attached into the outlet, and it'll automatically go out and test the wiring from here to the circuit breaker without having to remove the cover plates or hook up any alligator clips or anything. And what's very interesting is we plugged it into this outlet here, and it automatically came up with and said no ground. So we found that there's no ground at this outlet. If there was a ground, it would actually show us the resistance of the ground, whether it was 0.2 ohms, 0.4 ohms. As you know, if it's greater than 5 ohms, you'd have a problem with the inspector. Another thing this gives us is the voltage drop. And we can select three different loads. So we have a 10 amp, a 15 amp, and a 20 amp. And what we're looking for here is if the voltage drop is greater than 5%, that would be greater than is allowed by code. So if we're testing a simple circuit that's wired for 10 amps, we wouldn't want to test it at 20 amps because it would probably fail that test. To show you that, here we have a voltage drop of 2.5% and the loaded voltage on the line would be 116. So here we're using a 10 amp load on this. What's nice about this instrument is I can select a 10 amp, a 15 amp, or a 20 amp load. What we're doing is we're testing this now as if there's a 15 amp load on the circuit. We're simulating that using pulses and the pulses are fast enough that we're not going to blow your circuit breaker. So here, when I went from a 10 amp load to a 15 amp load, all of a sudden my voltage dropped to 114 and I have 3.9 percent. Well this is getting pretty close to that 5 percent maximum voltage drop and I'm simulating it here because I'm actually using a 10 amp extension cord and I'm testing it at 15 amps so the voltage drop is approaching unacceptable. I've increased the load on this to 20 amps and I'm showing a voltage drop of 5.1 percent which is over the acceptable amount of 5 percent and I have a loaded voltage of only 113 volts instead of 120 volts. The reason I can simulate this is this is a 10 amp extension cord and I'm testing it at 20 amps so this is indicating let's say you think you have a 20 amp circuit that's wired correctly when in fact they're only using wire that's sufficient for a 15 amp circuit this tester will indicate it right away and as you can see on the display we're showing that there's no ground on this circuit as well so by simply plugging in this tester we can test the circuit right at the outlet all the way back to the circuit breaker and see if the ground is proper what the resistance of the ground is if the wire is sufficient there might be some splices in between that are causing voltage drops so we can quickly test that just simply by plugging it right into the outlet so we have a secondary display on this that can give us more information about the circuit that we have under test. Over here I'm showing it has 118 volts at the outlet. It's at 60 Hertz. Because we have no ground we can't read the common mode voltage which is the voltage difference between the ground and the neutral. We can also see the hot to neutral fault current. What this is is what the current would be if these were shorted at the outlet and it also shows if we had a short between the hot and the ground. So these are additional capabilities. If I hit the power select button, I can go back to the first display where I'm showing again my voltage, my frequency, and if I put a load on that of 20 amps, that voltage would drop from 118 to 112 and that would be at 5.3 percent which would be over the acceptable amount by the National Electric Code. Here we have the Amprobe Inspector 3 plugged into an outlet that is grounded properly. It's showing us the voltage is 119, 60 Hertz, the polarity is okay. The voltage drop at a 10 amp load would be 1.2 percent and 0.3 percent is on the hot lead, 0.9 percent is on the neutral, the loaded voltage would be 118, but very importantly, now that we have a ground, it's actually measuring the ground impedance of 0.9 ohms from this outlet back to the panel. 
So this not only indicates if the outlet is properly grounded or the, the branch circuit is properly grounded, but it gives you a reading of what the actual ground resistance is. Well, we went over the standard functions of the Amprobe Inspector 3. It also has some pretty slick GFCI and AFCI testing capabilities. When I plug it into a GFCI outlet and hit the GFCI test, what it does is first it tests the breaker at 6 milliamps versus a fault current and it measures how long it takes to trip. So if it passed, it would say GFCI breaker test passed at 6 milliamps for 1.2 seconds. If it failed the 6 milliamp test, it then shorts it out with 30 milliamps and comes back and says it passed if it tripped with 30 milliamps in 1.5 seconds. If it didn't trip, it will come back with, with a display that says it failed the 6 milliamp test, it failed the 30 milliamp test, and the GFCI test failed. So instead of simply just hitting a short shorting switch, we're actually putting a very low current, 6 milliamps to test it, and then 30 milliamps to test it, and we're seeing how long it takes for that breaker to trip. This is very important because it only takes 40 milliamps or 0.04 amps to stop your heart. So we're actually testing this at, uh, to make sure the GFCI is going to trip at a lower current than what's fatal for you. For more information, please contact your T-Equipment Test and Measurement Specialist.